Hi, my name is Christian Hyde. I'm a managing director at RISC 360 and I help oversee our ISO 27001 practice. In this series, we cover off on all of the 114 control requirements of ISO 27001 and help provide a detailed explanation so you can move through the framework. Here on my screen, I have uh, two things. I have on the left hand side here the ISO 27001 standard itself with 114 controls in table format. And on the right hand side, I have the accompanying standard, which is ISO 27002, that provides detailed implementation guidance for every requirement. In today's video, we're going to cover off on control objective number seven, which is human resource security. And I'll cover off on some examples and talk you through what you might need to provide an auditor to get through an uh, external certification or to implement the framework. So human resource security is broken up into three control objectives. And the way that ISO thinks about it is, what do you do with employees prior to employment? What do you do with them, with them during employment? And then how do you terminate that employee? So if we dive into control objective 7.1, which is prior to employment, there are two controls. So you'll see that they think about controls in terms of screening an employee before they start and the terms of their employment. So let's look at screening. This is control 7.1.1. So screening an employee and typically involves things like performing an interview, doing a background check, doing employee uh, prior employment verification and things of that nature. Some of the things that come up uh, when you're implementing the framework is do I have to do a background check? And the answer is yes, that you do have to do a background check on employees, but there's some leeway into what that background check in, uh, includes. So for example, you might be limited by uh, what's legally allowed in your jurisdiction. So you always have to abide by the law. Um, I've also seen uh, em companies that want to limit background checks only to relevant employees. So for example, you might not need to do background screening on 100% of your employee population, but you may define by policy that you do background checks on individuals who have key business functions or key security functions or who, who may, may come into contact with private data or things like that. So you do have some leeway to specify in your policy and have some logic behind how you do screening. But ultimately, you will need to provide evidence of background checks to an auditor or implement some type of background screening to comply with the framework. The next control is control 7.1.2, which is around terms and conditions of employment. And what that really translates into is um, the documentation an employee signs uh, before becoming an employee. Some of that documentation typically includes employee agreements, non-competes, non-solicitations, confidentiality agreements. They might sign the information security policy. So the whole body of uh, contractual agreements that an employee signs to become an employee. And you, the key for ISO 27001 is that you want to make sure that you integrate uh, information security into those agreements to basically verify that the employee understands that they have to abide by information <laughs> security policies to become an employee of the business. The next control objective is around the security requirements during an employ uh, employment for an employee. And there's three uh, controls associated with this control objective. The first is around management responsibilities. So this says that employees have to apply information security principles in accordance with policies during their employment. And this really comes back to you articulating to that employee what the expectation around information security uh, is for them based on their role. So uh, typical evidence of that would be embedding information security requirements into a job description, uh, may, again, making them sign uh, employee agreements um, to ensure that they understand what their expectations are and being able to evidence that during an audit. Um, closely tied to that is the next control, 7.2.2, .2, which is around information security awareness and education and training. And what that basically requires is based on the individual's role, they receive a certain amount of education and training related to information security. That typically manifests itself in a couple ways. One is that all employees should receive information security awareness training. And that's typically done via like a web-based training or e-learning, or it might be a PowerPoint presentation that the information security leader provides to that team. But the bottom line is all employees need a baseline information security training, especially if they ha have access to email or any kind of corporate um, network type of things. Uh, a tough one there is evidencing that to an auditor. 
and uh, that typically means that you have to include a roster of employee training or if you're using a web-based tool you need to be able to generate a listing of all individuals that have completed that training and if you have a big company sometimes it's tough to get you know a hundred percent participation in those trainings so you'll need someone to really own that function to make sure every single employee is doing annual security awareness training hey, remember that's annual that means they're doing it uh, typically upon onboarding and then every employee is doing it at least once per year the next uh, control under control objective 7.2 is the, around the disciplinary process and what that functionally means is that you have defined a specific disciplinary process if someone violates the information security requirements um, and what, how that manifests itself is typically in the HR manual or in the information security policy you're saying that if someone violates information security they could be terminated and again where you would usually find that type of language is in your HR manual or directly in your information security policy um, the last control objective is around termination or change of employment and what that is looking for is that when an employee departs the company uh, you have a defined process to exit that employee in accordance with information security policies. So what that usually looks like is when someone leaves, you have a detailed offboarding process. So an offboarding checklist to remove their access, to get them to reconfirm their understanding of information security around confidentiality and, uh, and not violate any information security policies on the way out. Uh, I do have a couple examples I wanted to show here, especially on the onboarding and offboarding process because if you're hiring a lot of employees or if you have terminated some employees during the year, um, you need to be able to evidence that you did follow a detailed onboarding checklist and offboarding checklist process. And if you're using an HR tool or an IT tool to onboard and offboard employees, typically there's some kind of checklist associated with that. And for us, it, we have something that kind of looks like this. It's every single step that we want to do when we onboard an employee and then basically the opposite of those steps when you're offboarding an employee. So an auditor is going to be looking for a checklist like this, either systematic or something that you've kept manual to demonstrate that when you onboarded an employee that you followed all the steps and when you offboarded those employees that you followed all the steps. The auditor will sample employees, so they'll get a list directly from your HR system to see who was a new hire and who was a terminated employee, and they'll take a sample from those to see if you have these types of onboarding and offboarding uh, checklists. They'll do the same with background screening and the other audit artifacts. So to summarize, some of the things that you'll need to fulfill the control objective of number seven of around human resource security includes background checks or evidence of background screening. You'll need an employee onboarding checklist. You'll need an employee offboarding checklist. You'll need uh, terms of employment in ter uh, that are, would be employee agreements and HR manuals or any other kind of signed documentation that defines information security requirements. You'll need to define roles and responsibilities around uh, management responsibilities for information security. You'll need uh, evidence of uh, security awareness training for all employees, either out of a web platform or just some roster demonstrating that everyone completed their security awareness training. You'll need evidence of a disciplinary process, so saying that someone could be terminated if they violate those information security policies that typically be in your human resource manual. And then again, you'll need that offboarding checklist that looks something like this when employees leave the organization. And if you can do those things, then you'll fulfill control objective number seven around human resource security. Uh, if you found this video helpful, you can uh, check us out at risk360.com. We have similar videos like this for every control objective, and uh, you can learn there. I hope this was helpful and look forward to the next one.